All right, so the big things here, guys, for the dynamics unit were Newton's first law. Newton's second law is the biggest thing. Okay, we're going to have lots of stuff on Newton's second law on the final exam because it was the bulk of the unit. Okay, work energy theorem was also going to be important. Okay, any uh, force acting over a distance can change the mechanical energy of an object. Uh, and then we had conservation of energy. Okay, um, and that we said that that could be in either in one of two con contexts. Okay, that could be like you know roller coaster context, or it could be a mass on a spring oscillating context, as that concept was in two units. Okay, and then the last thing we talked about in there. Sorry, we, then we talked about Newton's third law. Okay, if reaction has equal and opposite reaction, a few multiple choice questions about that, but no problem solving. And then finally, we talked about power, same idea, just some multiple choice stuff, no problem solving to do with that. The bulk of the problem solving will be on Newton and work energy theorem. Okay, so I'll take questions, awesome. Power is the rate at which work is accomplished, okay? I mean, if you, know, you take that further, that means that a more powerful machine would do more work, provided there was a set time interval. If there's not, then it'll just do it faster. Okay, so what other questions, guys? Any problems we want to go over? Or... I know it's Monday morning. It's tough. Work energy with a ramp. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so we have a ramp. And we're going to start off with the box at the bottom of this ramp. And at the bottom of the ramp... Um, the box has a velocity of one meter per second. Obviously, it's at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, we'll say that its mass is 20 kilograms. Uh, we'll say that the ramp is inclined 30 degrees, um, and that the length of the ramp is, I don't know, let's say, 10 meters. Okay, we are going to exert a force no I'm gonna do it a different way okay at the top of the ramp okay the um, the box is now moving at six meters per second okay. I want to know how much work is done in getting it there. I probably wouldn't give you one that had this much work to do on it, on a work energy theorem, that much work. It's terrible, but okay. Um, wouldn't give you one like this on a test because it's too much. I'd probably give you more information, but this allows us to go through a little bit more. All right. There are generally two ways to do this, but I've made this one so that really you can only do it one way. Okay. Um, so. Sometimes we can do force times distance. That would involve, okay, I've got to find, you know, the force that's used, um, which would be if it's frictionless, just enough to overcome F parallel and push it all the way up the 10 meter long length of the ramp. Okay, um, we could do that, but um, we could also figure out the change in energy, right? And since I know the length of the ramp and the angle, can I figure out how much higher it is here? I can. All right. So that's the first thing I want to do is calculate. Um, how high it will be on the other side of the ramp. Okay, so I'm looking for the um, opposite side. So I've got the hypotenuse. So I'm going to take the sine of 30. Why am I doing that? The sine of 30 times 10 is 5 meters. I'm not going to do that one on the calculator. Okay, um, so we've got 5 meters uh, height on the other side. The work done, which is what I'm looking for, is the change in mechanical energy. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the final mechanical energy and I'm going to subtract the initial mechanical energy. There's not very much mechanical energy initially, is there? Right? We're talking the bottom of the ramp where there's no what? What kind of energy do you not have at the bottom of a ramp? You have no potential energy, right? Okay, and we're only moving at one meter per second, so we have hardly any kinetic energy either, right? But we still have to calculate it. Okay, up here we would have some kinetic because we're moving at six meters per second, and we're five meters higher than the bottom, so there's some potential. All right, so what we got to do is calculate those differences. So the work will be, okay, our uh, 
final potential plus our final kinetic minus our initial kinetic because that's all there was. We just said there's no um, potential energy at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, so just expanding it out here, okay, we have, what do we say the mass was, 20 kilograms? So that would be our calculation that we're going to have to do. Okay, I've got the potential energy at the top plus the kinetic energy at the top, and I'm subtracting the kinetic energy at the bottom. Initial mechanical, or sorry, final mechanical minus initial mechanical energy. Okay, so we've got 20 times 9.81 times 5, and plus 0.5 times 20 times 36. All right, so there's our... Uh, mechanical energy at the top, right? And uh, we're just going to have 10 joules of energy at the bottom, right? One half times 20 is 10, times one squared is 10. So we only have 10 joules of energy at the bottom. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so we have done 1,331 joules worth of work in arriving at the top. Now, a work energy theorem question could go a lot of different ways. I could have given you that number to begin with and asked you what the speed at the top of the ramp would have been. Okay, It would have been similar calculations, just in a different order. Right? But generally, they all work the same. We have to set it up as work is a change in mechanical energy and go from there. All right. Is that good, Emily? Okay. What else, guys? Lifting an object at an angle. Oh, you mean like when we were, they were pulling it at an angle, but it was moving horizontal. Okay, sorry, I was picturing lifting at an angle and going, I don't think we went over any of those. Okay. Yeah, but this, uh, this was from a Newton's second law perspective, right? Yeah. All right, so we have a surface that has a coefficient of friction of 0.1. Two five, let's say. Okay, this box, which is, oh, let's keep going with twenty kilograms. We'll use the same box as the last question. Okay, twenty kilogram box. Uh, we'll say uh, about a twenty degree angle here, and let's say three hundred newtons of force. Whenever I do this, I always end up making this so that the box actually comes off the table. Um, okay. So these are, this is the initial situation. We want to calculate the acceleration of the 20 kilogram block as it moves along the table. All right, um, so what are some other forces I should add to this? Because I'm supposed to draw kind of a free body diagram right now. There's only one force drawn on there. I need to make this look a lot more complex. What other forces are on there? Friction. Okay, what else? Right, the vertical component, okay, which I'm also going to draw over here, right, which means we also have the horizontal component, which will be important. Okay, what else? Gravity. One more, anytime you set something on something else. Normal force, right? Okay, so I've got to calculate a few of those, right? Right now, um, force of friction requires me to use this formula, FF equals mu times FN. And I don't know what FN is yet, okay? I haven't calculated either of the components of this 300 Newton force, nor have I calculated gravity up until now. Now I've calculated gravity, okay? So I have that one. All right, so I've got to calculate some of the other ones. So I'm going to calculate the two components here of that 300 Newton force. All right, so force vertical will be the sine of 20 degrees 
times 300 newtons. Okay, 102, might be too much. Okay, uh, and then the force horizontal. So we'll have cos of 20 times 300. All right, so 281.908. All right, so this thing's not moving vertically. Okay, we've already said the context of the question was it's sliding along the table. So what do Fn, Fv, and Fg add up to? Oh, okay. Uh, yes, in a way they add up to Fnet. What number do they add up to? Zero, yeah. It's not moving vertically. All the vertical forces add up to zero because we were already told that it's sliding along the table. All right, so what I want to do then is figure out what Fn is because I need it to get the force of friction. And I can find it now that I know it plus Fv plus Fg equals zero. Everyone all right with that idea? So really, I'm just going to take 196.2 and subtract this, and that'll leave me with whatever uh, Fn equals. Okay, so 196.2 minus... 102.606. Okay, is 93.594. All right, now that I have Fn, can I find the force of friction? Okay, so I'm going to use this formula here. So force of friction will be 0.125 mu times normal force 93.594. All right, so we have 11.699 newtons of friction. So not very much friction. It's hardly going to interfere with the dragging of this thing along the table. All right, so now I don't need any of the vertical forces anymore. I don't need this 300 newton force. Okay, I just need to know, since it's going along the table, the net force between the forward pulling force and the backward resisting force. How do I do that? Like basically I'm calculating net force now. I'm adding all the forces together. These all add up to zero, okay? The 300 I already took into account by splitting it up into vertical and horizontal. I only have two forces left and they're opposite. So I should subtract them, okay? So I'll have my F net being the sum of all forces, the vector sum of all forces. So 281.908 minus 11.699, that'll give me my net force. All right, so my net force is 270.209. Now I want to calculate the acceleration. So what do I do? What's the other formula for F net? Mass times acceleration. So I just divide by the mass, okay, which we said was 20. All right, so this thing is really accelerating okay, at 13.51 uh, meters per second. Actually, I think we only have two significant figures. So 14 meters per second squared along the table. That's like a pretty hard jerk okay, to make it go like that. Okay, everyone all right with that one? All right, what else? <laughs> no, 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 like multiple choice, like checking your understanding, not multiple choice. I make you do five marks worth of work for one mark. Yeah, I'm not Alberta learning on a diploma exam. Yeah. Incline plane, okay. That's a force question, right? Okay, so we're going to look for the, uh, so we're going to be given the acceleration of the box. We're going to say it's accelerating up the ramp at 
meters per second squared. Okay. Um, there's a coefficient of, no, I won't even make it do coefficient of friction. Let's just say the force of friction is, I don't know, let's say 85 newtons. Right. We want to calculate the force pulling this thing up the ramp, right? Because it's accelerating up the ramp. Right. So we want to calculate the tension force in the rope that's pulling it up the ramp. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes on that one to try it, okay? and then we'll go through it together. All right, so the first thing we want to do is identify the other forces that are at, at work here. Okay, and one that's always present whenever something's on an inclined plane is, okay, gravity, which pulls this way. Yep. What else? Hmm? Friction. Okay, since it's going up the ramp, friction is acting down the ramp. All right, what's the other, the special force that's always present on an inclined plane? No, hmm? F parallel. All right, so we got F parallel acting down the ramp. F parallel always acts down the ramp. We also have normal force here, but we won't need it. It just makes up that triangle that we always draw to help us get F parallel, because F parallel is actually the net force between normal force and the force of gravity. All right, so um, we're going to take our F parallel here, okay, and we're sorry, our FG, and we're going to calculate F parallel. So first we have to calculate FG, so that's going to be 30 times 9.81. Okay, so 294.3 newtons, okay, and now we can use that to calculate F parallel because it's the hypotenuse of the triangle, All right? So we'll take the sine of 40. All right, times our answer from the last one. All right, so it's 189.172. Okay, so that's our F parallel. Okay, we already know our force of friction is 85 newtons. Okay, and this we said is 89 or 189.172. All right, um, I know the mass of this box and I know its acceleration. What can I calculate with those two things? F net, right? So that's the next thing I want to do. All right, so F net equals M times A. So we'll take our 30 kilograms and multiply it by, we said 2.5. Okay. Okay. Wow, I'm having all kinds of luck with that. What is wrong with my zero? Seventy-five. Screw it. Okay, it's seventy-five newtons. Okay, so our net force is seventy-five newtons up the ramp. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Um, so we've got seventy-five newtons as our net force. We know this one, this one, but we're looking for tension, right? That means I've got to use that net force is the vector sum of all forces in order to calculate that. All right. So F net is going to be F parallel plus the force of friction, plus the tensional force, right? I'm looking for tension, so I'm going to subtract the other two over to the other side, right? So I'll have F net minus F parallel minus the force of friction, okay, equals T. Now, I have to remember vectors here. Down the ramp is going to be negative, right? So I have to make F parallel and the force of friction negative. So I'm going to have 75 minus negative uh, 189.5. 172 uh, minus negative 85, which was our force of friction. That'll give us our uh, tension. So 75 plus 189.172 plus 85. Okay, so the tension is 3.5 times 10 to the 2 newtons up the ramp. How important is this last piece? If one mark important, yep. Okay, if you were missing that on the exam, you would be missing a mark for that question as well. Okay, got to have a vector on a vector quantity. All right, what else? Okay. 
Okay. How many people have started uh, working on the review package? Okay. That's good. That's a good start. Um, how many people have started looking over quizzes? Okay. That's the other, like I said, those are the other good things to do. Okay. Look over your um, review package. Look over your worksheets. Definitely look over your quizzes because they'll tell you which things you understood the first time and maybe didn't. Okay. Um, so make sure you look over those. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time here to see if some more questions come up. So you can work on the review package or your worksheets or whatever. Um, but then I think I will get into circular motion, like kind of do the, just the review of the unit, the key points today. And I'll probably start that, let's say 9.35, something like that. Okay, see if any more questions come up on dynamics while you're working. Yeah, I can. All right, so this one's actually from kinematics. Okay, so we have a car that makes a trip consisting of three parts. So, okay, so I've got part one, part two, part three, and then totals. Right, because the key to this question here, if we're looking for average speed and average velocity, is that we have to remember average speed and average velocity are total distance or total displacement, depending on which one, over total time. Okay, so in part one, 31 meters per second north, okay, for 40 kilometers, which is 40,000 meters. Okay, part two, 25,000 meters south okay, in 15 minutes. So 900 seconds. Okay, and then part three, um, 21 meters per second. North for 32 minutes. So 1,920 seconds. Okay. So if I'm going to get the average speed, which is what they want in part A, I need the total distance and I need the total time. All right. Um, I don't have distance for part, I don't have displacement, sorry, for part three, but it's easy to calculate. Okay, we'll just go 21 times 1,920. Whoops, that's not right. Okay, so 40,320 meters. Okay, so the total distance doesn't care whether I went north or south. So I'm gonna take that and add on 25,000 and add on 40,000. Okay, so we have 105,320. Okay, uh, we need the time, we need the total time, so we don't have the time for part one, so that's D over V, 40,000 meters, okay, divided by 31. Okay, so we got uh, 1,290 seconds. All right, so now we'll take our totals here. So we'll have 105,320 divided by um, our answer plus 900 plus uh, 1,920. So that's our total distance over total time. So our average speed is 27 meters per second. Yeah, and then for displacement, um, we'll have the same time, but our displacement will be uh, different because now we have this south that we have to subtract. And okay, so we have uh, 80,320 uh, minus 25,000. Okay, so there's that's plus 80,000 minus 25,000. Okay, so there's our total displacement. Then we divide it by um, our total time again. So that'll be, um, oh, I didn't write down the time, did I? Shoot. Anyone remember what that total time was? Yeah, anyway, divided by the total time again. 
13 meters per second north. Okay. All right. What else, guys? Anything else? Okay. Then keep working on uh, some dynamic stuff, and hopefully some other questions will come up. Okay, so with uh, circular motion, the first day of circular motion, we went over the properties of circular motion, of uniform circular motion, that is. Okay, so horizontal, the stuff where the speed is constant. Okay, and we talked about how um, the object's velocity is always changing. Okay, uh, always accelerating towards center. Okay, and um, speed was constant. All right, so there could be, you know, some multiple choice questions just about, you know, how does circular motion occur? What kind of things have to be present? Obviously, there has to be a centripetal force and things like that. Okay, so uh, there wasn't a whole lot of like math in that first one. Uh, we we did talk about how V is two pi r over t, and we talked about how centripetal acceleration is V squared over r. But I mean, you guys can probably count on one hand the number of times you used the centripetal acceleration formula in that unit, right? We used V equals two pi r over t fairly often, okay? Especially when we were substituting it in uh, when we were talking about satellites, and we substituted it in for V. Okay, the uh, second day, we went over centripetal force. Okay, we talked about how that's mv squared over r, how that's really just Newton's second law. It's mass times acceleration, but applied to a circle. Okay, things of that nature are what we went over um, for centripetal force. Then we talked about specific examples. Okay, we talked about unbanked curves. What holds you in an unbanked curve? No, that's a bank curve. The angle holds you in, well, the normal force, friction holds you in, in this one. Okay, how many unbanked curve problems did we do? A decent amount, yeah. And there was one on your final, on your unit exam. So, since that was one that we did quite often, you know, it might be reasonable to expect to see something like that again. Okay, as an example of a simple um, kind of uniform circular motion question. We also talked about bank curves. Okay, and how we use the banking angle to produce a component of the normal force that acts back into the circle, right? So we had this angle of bank, right? Normal force acted out, but it had a component that was acting back towards the center. That was the centripetal force. Okay, and then we talked about artificial gravity, which was just another example of uniform circular motion. There could be maybe a multiple choice question or something, but I mean, it's something to go over for certain because it is something that we talked about. Okay, we want the centripetal force to equal the force of gravity okay, uh, in that situation. Then we talked about vertical circular motion. Okay, In vertical circular motion, it's not uniform. Gravity is now involved. The object changes its velocity and its speed all the way through the circle. Where is it going the fastest? Bottom of the circle, right? Going slowest at the top. Remember, there's this minimum speed that has to be required, uh, or that is required, and sorry, for it to go through the, the circle. That's always at the top of the circle, okay? Um, so the big thing to remember about vertical circular motion is that it is, uh, the centripetal force is the vector sum of all forces. That is, forces in minus forces out. And that, that's different for all different points on the circle. Okay, If we are down here at the bottom, gravity acts out. 
normal force acts in. Okay, if we're here on the top, okay, then gravity and normal force both act in unless we're going at the minimum speed, and then which one of those is zero? Then normal force is zero. Okay, um, and then we also talked about over the top of the vertical circle. This is where you could also produce a feeling of apparent weightlessness if you went fast enough. F n would be zero. Okay, um, just like uh, the video that we watched there. Right, I would expect to see a vertical circular motion problem on your unit exam. Okay. We spent quite a bit of time on vertical circular motion. All right, then after vertical circular motion, we talked about satellite motion. Uh, sorry, we talked about gravitation first. Gravitation. Okay, so there could be some multiple choice questions about like Cavendish and Kepler, okay, things like that, because they were part of uh, gravitation, right? But obviously, there could also be some problem solving to do with that formula. Okay, we did on the unit exam the same example that we went over in class, which was calculate the net gravitational force on the Earth from the sun and the moon if they're in these positions. Right? It's an easy way to combine some vector stuff from one unit with and, and, uh, and Newton's second law stuff, sum of all forces, with gravitation from another unit. And you know I'm a fan of overlapping questions. So it okay, could be something to have a look at. After we talked about gravitation, then we talked about satellites. All satellite motion problems can be solved by setting FC equal to FG. So MV squared over R equals big MG. Okay, so like this. Once in a while on these questions, however, we had to substitute in V equals 2 pi R over T for V because we weren't given the radius and we were given the period instead or something like that. Okay, so when that happens, then we have M 4 pi squared because V is squared in this formula, right? Uh, times R over T squared. Okay, so you do have to be able to do that substitution most likely for your final exam. And then gravitational field strength. We don't want to get burned on a gravitational field strength question again. Okay, so make sure that you read questions carefully. If you see the words gravitational field strength, bold phased, italicized, and underlined, please make sure that you treat it as a gravitational field strength problem instead of a force of gravity problem. Okay, so um, the circular motion unit has a fair number of multiple choice questions. I mean, there's only like 19 or 20 multiple choice questions, but um, it's probably got the largest number of multiple choice of any unit. Okay, it's only got three written response, I think. So it gives you a pretty good idea, but that are just circles. There could be questions with overlap, obviously. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know the kinds of questions you're going to be asked. This was a unit that we did well on. Okay, it was our best unit right, in the in the course. So um, make sure that it's still going to be good for you on the final. Okay, make sure you still go over this. The worst thing you go, so oh, I did really good on that exam. I don't need to study that unit anymore. That could be about the most incorrect thing you could possibly say. Okay. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you are continuing to go over stuff, even if you feel confident in it, it's still a good idea to go over it. Okay. All right, so um, tomorrow I will take questions on circles. Actually, I've got some time to take questions on circles now, which I will do in just a minute. Okay, um, I'll take questions on circles and anything else in the course, because tomorrow is our last day. So the more questions you come with, the more you'll get out of our last day. Okay, so just make sure that you're ready. Um, what do you need to bring with you to the test? 
pencils, plural. Calculator with fresh batteries or charged. I'm looking at you, Mitch. Charged. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah, answers. Well, yes. You, yeah. If whatever ones you can put in your head are always good. Um, a little tough since you don't know the questions ahead of time, but um, yeah. So make sure you bring those two things for sure. Okay. Make sure you leave your cell phone somewhere else. Okay. Do not bring it into the exam. Um, and if you're going to have water or or food or you know, whatever, make sure that it's exam appropriate. It's not going to, you know, um, be noisy or messy or anything like that. Pardon me. Nine and one. Yeah. We can't we can't go earlier because kids have to arrive by bus, right? So um, they'll open the doors at eight forty-five. Okay. Come in and sit down. Find your test. Same as usual. It's going to be. Uh, you'll have a row, okay, and the tests will be in alphabetical order starting from the west wall. Okay, so find yours and sit down at it. Uh, inside the exam, will, so if you flip it open, you'll have tucked in there the multiple choice form, which looks exactly like all the others, and a fresh formula sheet. So that'll be tucked into the exam. Okay, um, so you don't have to tear the exam apart. Please don't tear the exam apart. Okay, I made a separate sheet and I didn't staple it on, so you wouldn't have to. Um, and then when you're done, obviously you have to, you have to be in there for an hour. Okay. Um, if you're done my test in an hour, you're not done my test. Sit there and keep working. Okay. That is not throwing down the gauntlet of challenge. Please don't take it that way. <laughs> okay. It takes longer than an hour to write the test. Uh, so just make sure that you're um, completing everything. And yeah, do the stuff you're confident in first. Okay. Don't, don't rush to do it in order or anything like that. Okay. Read it through. Do the ones you are confident in first. Okay, any questions from circular motion that you would like to ask? I know we weren't expecting to do that today, but it just worked out. Okay, well, hopefully you'll come up with some for tomorrow. Keep working. You still have seven minutes left in class, so I don't want to see anybody packed up or visiting or anything like that. Okay, let's make good use of our time. Playing games on our phone is not making good use of our time. Okay, I just see too many heads down. Right. So let's get to work on some final exam stuff.